Kia ora. We're going to look at calculating oxidation numbers. Now remember that oxidation numbers are theoretical numbers and we can work it out using these six rules which you do need to learn off by heart. So the first rule is that the oxidation number of an atom in a free and uncombined element is zero. So for example we have hydrogen, copper, nitrogen. These are all elements that are not combined with any other element, so it's considered to be a free element. So the oxidation number for hydrogen and hydrogen gas is zero. The second rule is that oxygen, if it's in a compound, will always have an oxidation number of minus two. So oxygen and water, the oxygen atom has an oxidation number of minus two. There are exceptions, and the one you need to know about is hydrogen peroxide, and that's when it's, the oxidation number is minus one. The third one is hydrogen. If it's in a compound like water, then each hydrogen atom has the oxidation number of plus one. Again, there are exceptions, but you don't need to know that um, for level two or three. The fourth rule is if I have a simple iron like a copper iron or an iodide iron, in other words, it's not sulfate, it's not a polyatomic iron, it's only one atom in this iron, then the value of the charge is the same as the oxidation number. Now, please realize that a charge is not the same as an oxidation number. An oxidation number is a theoretical value. Um, it just means if I do have a monatomic iron, then the value of that charge is the same as the oxidation number. So the oxidation number of copper and copper 2 plus is positive 2. If I don't know the oxidation number of a substance, uh, of an element in a substance, I can work it out. So for example, in manganese uh, dioxide, I can apply rule two to know that every oxygen atom is minus two, but I don't know for manganese. So what I would do in this case is apply rule five, where if I add up all the oxidation numbers of all the atoms in that substance, if it's a neutral substance, then the oxidation number, sorry, then the sum of those oxidation numbers is equal to zero. And we will look at examples of this. And then the final rule that you need to learn off by heart is that if I have an ionic compound that's polyatomic, so more than one element in this ion, then um, the sum of the oxidation numbers won't be equal to zero because it's not neutral. It will be equal to the charge. So let's now look at examples of how you do this. Consider a reaction we have dichromate and a bubble sulfur dioxide through, and it turns this greeny blue and it's because I get these two particular products. So let's look at the oxidation number of the elements in each case. Now here oxygen in all these three compounds, it is in a compound of some sort or polyatomic iron, so it'll always be minus two from rule number three. But we need to apply rule numbers five and six to work out the oxidation number of chromium and sulfur. So let's have a look. I have two chromiums in this compound. The sum of all the oxidation numbers must be equal to negative two from rule number six. So we write a little algebraic uh, expression here where two X, X is my unknown oxidation number, plus seven oxygens where each oxygen is minus two is all equal to negative two. And so I just solve for X and I get the oxidation number of chromium in dichromate is positive six. What about sulfur and sulfur dioxide? I can write up the same little expression, but because this is a neutral compound, I apply rule five, so it's equal to zero. I have two oxygens, so from rule two, each one is minus two. I can complete that, so I can solve for the unknown oxidation number for sulfur, and I get an answer of four. If I now try and look at the products, what is the oxidation number of chromium and Cr3 plus? This is rule four where the value of the charge is the same as the oxidation number, so it'll be plus three. Here I apply rule six again because I have a polyatomic iron, and so I write an algebraic expression where the sum of all the oxidation numbers is equal to minus two because that is the charge. I have four oxygen atoms, each with minus two, so I can solve this problem, and I have six again for the oxidation number for sulfur. So what does this mean? 
I can say that the oxidation number of chromium in this reaction changed from um, plus six in dichromate to plus three in the chromium three iron. So you can see it's become a less positive. It's gone from plus six to plus three. Now notice what I've highlighted here. The oxidation number is always a property of an element. So don't just say the oxidation number becomes less positive or the oxidation number changes from six to three. It is not specific enough. You must identify the element. So in this case, it's chromium. And then you must identify the number in each species. So chromium was plus six, but where? In which compound? So you must say plus six in dichromate, and it was plus three in the chromium three iron. In the same way, we can do the same thing for sulfur in sulfur dioxide and the sulfate. So we say the oxidation number of the element, sulfur, it becomes more positive because it's increasing from plus four, that's the oxidation number we worked out, and we relate it to the species, plus four in SO2 to plus six in sulfate. So when we have an increase in oxidation number, it means that we have lost electrons because electrons are negative. If we have a decrease in oxidation number, it becomes um, more negative or less positive. We have gained electrons. So let's see whether in this reaction, our reactant, and there's only one reactant in each case, has gained or lost electrons. So we work out always the oxidation numbers first. Rule number one, bromine is not attached to any other element, so it is zero. And bromide, it is a simple iron, the value is the same as its charge. We have become more negative, so we would have gained electrons. Here with permanganate, we apply rule six, the sum must be equal to minus one, and we apply rule two, each oxygen is minus two in a compound, so we can work out in this little expression that the oxidation number for manganese is seven, and this is rule four, it's plus two. So again, we've gone from plus seven to plus two, we have become more negative, so our permanganate has gained electrons. With hydrogen peroxide, remember this is the exception that you need to learn for oxygen. So it is minus one in hydrogen peroxide. And then from rule number one, this is um, a free element. So it's the oxidation number of oxygen in O2 is zero. And so we have become more positive, And so we have lost electrons. In this particular case, iodate to iodide. If we solve for the oxidation number for iodine uh, element, we'll see that it goes from plus five to minus one. So we have become more negative. So the iodate has gained electrons. And finally, the iodide to iodine, rule number four, rule number one. So it goes from minus one to zero. And therefore, there has been a loss of electrons. So I hope you've understood how to work out oxidation numbers and to work out whether a substance has lost or gained electrons. Goodbye.